let me introduce myself. So my name is my name is Dimitro, and I work as business development manager for S4GA company already for five years. I believe uh, we have met with some of you today, uh, so we know each other. Uh, all that uh, don't know me, I can say that uh, my main job is uh, basically visiting customers and explaining about our systems. This webinar today will be mostly about one, one topic, which is why S4G system is the world's safest runway IT. This is a bold statement and we understand that. The reason for this webinar also is because while visiting our customers, during multiple meetings, we've been asked to explain the same question. So we decided to make separate webinar and to devote time just to go point by point and explain why we are saying like that. All right. During this webinar, we will make few moments when I will encourage you to ask me questions and I will be happy to answer them. You are, of course, welcome to use uh, your chats and to write those um, questions even as I speak. But I will, I will answer them uh, only during these uh, times when, when there is a time for questions, if you don't mind. Hold on, I'm checking if... I hope everybody uh, hear me well. All is good. Okay, let's 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 begin. Let's begin. To give you some uh, to give you some idea about what I will be talking about today, um, I make this simple agenda. Before even start talking about uh, world safest, I want you to also to all of you who don't who don't know us, I want to explain what we do, who we are. So a little bit about S4GA company. Of course, I will remind you about which products we do and also about I tell you about our customers so you all probably are interested to know uh, where our systems are installed today already or using them another question that is also important to to discuss and to explain is which airports normally select today as for GA solar airfield ground lighting because here sometimes we have a confusion so i want to explain that as well when i do all of that so we are on the same page uh, i will then move to the next topic which is runway lighting and it is its impact on safety of airport operations and i will tell that in order to explain so why s 4 g runway lights are world safest and as a last topic i will cover uh, will be also an issue of uh, operating on solar and i will explain why s4g runway lights can operate on solar 365 days and how can it uh, not be require any additional power source so that's that's our agenda for today i believe it shall not take us more than one hour for me for me to explain all of that of course not including times for questions so again i will speak uh, i try not to go too much into details i will speak uh, simple words i will speak simple uh, explanations we will have some time for questions and also i want to say that this webinar will be recorded so in case if uh, you or your colleagues would like to get back to it, to watch it far more time, then please email to us. Here is my email on the top of the, of the page. You can email me and uh, ask, ask for the, um, to share with you the video of this, uh, of this webinar. All right. In case if you do not uh, manage to write my email down, no problem. Uh, on the web page, you have uh, email that is office at solutions for ga.com. You can also email that. All 
Okay, let's 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 move on. What is S4GA? S4GA uh, is the company that is government owned by Polish government. Uh, we are based in Poland. Facility manufacturing facility also based in Poland. All what we manufacture in, is manufactured in Poland it, and also designed in Poland. What we do, we manufacture, we design, we distribute all over the world our world's safest runway lighting. And of course, as we are manufacturer of runway lighting, uh, all our products are certified. Um, when I say certified, I mean that compliance of our runway lighting is confirmed by Intertech. Intertech is the independent laboratory that tests runway lights in compliance with ICAO Annex 14. So those three things I wanted you to know about this. Project. Product portfolio. What, what do we do? Um, we have basically two major segments that we are covering with our products. Number one is permanent lighting. So we supply entire airports with complete runway lighting systems. When I say complete, I mean runway lights, taxiway lights, puppy, and also complete with control and monitoring system. So this is, this is what we do. This is one of our largest, largest uh, customer segment. We do permanent lighting systems, which are purely solar powered. We do not do traditional wired lighting. We only do solar power permanent lights. The segment, second segment that we serve is a temporary and emergency lighting systems that we provide for airports that do not require permanent lights, but they need lighting, runway lighting, which can uh, be used when needed or during emergencies. Uh, just hold on, please. Uh, I need to mute some of you because I hear some voices. Just wait a second. Okay, sorry for that. Okay. Uh, we also do uh, two small product lines, one of which is uh, airport construction, temporary lighting for airport construction. So we deliver whenever there is a construction in the airport or rehabilitation of the runway or the taxiway, we deliver battery powered lights, uh, taxiway lights or obstruction lights that are used for two, three months during this construction works. When main wired, so cabled, uh, cable lighting is uh, out of service. And another product that we also uh, have is a portable helipad lighting. We provide for remote areas. So we purely focused on the remote areas uh, helipads. So again, two major segments that we serve today is a permanent lighting for airports and air bases, and also temporary emergency lighting both for military and civil. Normally, this emergency temporary lighting is provided in the trailers like this or without trailers, depending on the customer requirements. OK. Where are we today? Where have we been installed? And who are customers? Today, we mainly focus in this area of highlighted in yellow. It's logical because this part of the world has a lot of sun and many countries located in this part of the world has not very well developed infrastructure. I mean, you have a la large territory like Ethiopia, you have large territory where you have airports located many kilometers far away from each other. There is a little or no highways 
and roads are not very in very good shape. And also there is a problem with uh, electrical supply. So in these cases, when you have uh, no electricity in location of airport, or it is non-reliable and you have a lot of sun, this is where our systems are normally uh, very popular. As you can see, the, the range of the application is, is pretty big. Also, the global range is also big because you, here you have both military airbase and civil airports. This is, uh, for example, airport used by mining company. We have, again, uh, military, military, civil, civil. Uh, we have both Europe, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Today, we have over 50 projects in more than 30 countries that are using our products. Okay. Just some examples of uh, S4G installations. Uh, all of these airports are using S4G solar lights on a permanent basis. So those are fixed systems that are using that are used by these airports every day. And those systems were chosen as an alternative to traditional lights for that or other reason. For example, we have Ethiopia. This is International Airport Jigjiga. We have Maldives Island, Dalo Airport. You have two military air bases in Libya. You have Greece, big international airport in Thessaloniki. You have French airport. So as you can see, geographically very spread it. But all of them, all of these uh, applications uh, are connected uh, with one uh, criteria. They all had a problematic electrical supply, and they have all enough sun to run, to run solar power radio lights. So they have selected solar instead of traditional wired 6.6 .6 amp lighting system. Okay. Also, to make it very clear who we serve. So which airports are normally selecting solar instead of wired lighting? Here you have, you see two types of airports. One is called non-precision, another one is precision. Precision approach, as you all know, we have cut one, two or three runways where you have inset lights uh, approach. All these airports are also equipped with ILS, instrumental landing system. And this segment of airports, this is not our customers. We serve regional and domestic airports that are located in areas where electrical supply is unreliable or it's unavailable and you have sun. So we built these simple but efficient systems that allow those airports to function 24-7. This is a typical example of the airport we do. Two kilometer runway operating such aircrafts as ATR or DASH. So those are this is this is the fleet normally used by these airports. Amount of operations of this on this airport, so amount of landings is significantly less than on these airports. But I mean significantly less. Uh, some of you might know that these regional airports in Africa or Asia, they serve well sometimes uh, five, six flights per day, sometimes one flight per week. But we're talking about commercial airports with scheduled traffic. Two more slides and I will, I will stop for the questions. Let's now talk about, and let's remind ourselves what kind of impact can runway lighting has, have on the, on the safety of airport operations. 
it is not a news for you, of course, that um, uh, runway lighting is the airport's most critical navigational aid. And it is, of course, expected to be operative day and night. Um, well, and this is why lighting system design involves multiple backups. Uh, the reason is simple, is to minimize probability of lighting outage, right? But unfortunately, the risk of complete loss of runway lighting is impossible to mitigate. The, even one single and unpredictable event can cause entire lighting outage, meaning loss of all runway lights. You can say that there are backups. Uh, there are backups um, existing uh, in the runway lights, but even those backups do not give you 100% guarantee. Um, in order to, to prove that uh, statement, some of you might know, some of you not, but during over the last five years, sudden loss of power supply caused runway lighting outage in the most sophisticated airports in the world. When I say most sophisticated, I mean, I mean well invested, very well designed and maintained runway lights, system of backups and reserve power supply, but this did not help them. Dubai International Airport, 2012 they lost a reserve power source and they had to uh, close entire entire airport and to redirect the flights because they cannot allow themselves to rely only on mains power on the on the primary source chicago they lost entire runway lighting and nobody knows why uh, at least when we were trying to, to find the reason for that there was no no reports on that uh, Airport not operated for, I think, five or six hours, 2012. Atlanta, this is the, the, the largest airport in the world in terms of passenger, passenger traffic. Uh, there was a day when they, uh, there was a complete failure. It was a fire in the, in the cables, bringing electricity to the airport. And so mains, mains power supply failed entire airport without electricity runway lighting stopped completely they couldn't fix it for eight and nine or nine hours and was complete disaster and many 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 passengers in, um, were delayed Heathrow the same situation complete loss of runway lighting so what I'm saying is yes the traditional lighting is well designed and it has a lot of backups a lot of reserve power generators uh, multiple circuits few substations but even all these um, all these um, backups do not give you that provide you with a 100 percent guarantee against lighting outage so before i go to the next uh, part of the presentation I will be happy to answer uh, your questions, gentlemen. Sorry, I'm trying to find out where the chat is. Hold on. Hello, hello. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, mute. Okay, I see now. I see them ask your questions. Uh -huh. What is the? What are the average? I see. I see. I see few questions. Just hold on. I, I will start answering them. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, uh, what are the average? By the way, some of you are asking questions uh, in a private mode, so only I see them. I suggest to ask questions so other people can see those questions as well, if you don't mind. Uh, I will write, I will now uh, read those questions that I see now. What are the average life of your products? How many hours can light last? Delivery time? And what will be the cost of regional airport lighting turnkey system? Okay. Those questions I just received. Okay. Uh, hold on. What are the life of, uh, of, of, of your product? Well, the product is designed to, uh, to be used for 15 years. Uh, the casing is made of polycarbonate. Uh, it's Alexan, it's the world's most uh, long lasting material, which means that, and it, it is not non corrosive, it's not metal, uh, so it's very long lasting. LED, uh, being a source of light is 100,000 hours. The, the thing that requires maintenance and exchange uh, is the battery. And the battery is designed to, to operate for three to four years. The battery shall be exchanged every three to four years. This is, uh, this is a part of maintenance plan. How many hours can light last? Uh, I understand that the question is about uh, autonomy. So basically, how can how many hours can light work operate on full charge? Well, the the answer is like that. Uh, runway edge light. This is that is the most um, typical light that we use on the runway. Is uh, has a battery autonomy of. 180 hours, so 180 hours. Uh, so this is this is the answer. Delivery, delivery time of such system of the full system for the for the let's say two two and a half kilometer runway will be around six to eight weeks. What will be the cost of uh, and when I say six to eight weeks, I mean that in eight weeks lighting system can be manufactured delivered installed and commissioned. What will be the cost of regional airport lighting turkey system? Um, okay, what will be the cost of regional airport lighting turkey system? Now, typical, when, when we say regional airport, uh, typically, uh, I would assume runway of a two kilometer length, which would require, well, let's say around 100 lights, runway lights and a control system. Plus maybe one puppy and wind direction indicator. Well, the, this kind of project, I will give you an average range of the price will be around 200,000 euro X works. I see there are a lot of questions about how to use our product. Heading to the point of the total cost for array AGL turnkey system, is there a time threshold years that makes a classical wire system most economical than the solar? No, there is no such time because the um, capex, which is investment in solar lighting, in in ninety percent cases requires less money. So solar lighting is cheaper than wire lighting. The reason is very simple. For well, wire lighting, you need to create distribution networks, so power distribution network, circuit CCRs, and which require a lot of labor. And this is what normally makes wire lighting more expensive. And also remember that every year when solar lighting is operating on the airport, uh, airport is generating savings. So in comparison to wire lighting, solar actually saves money, which you can say it provides airport with uh, return on investment. 
which wire lighting does not. Lights can be operated in all weather conditions. Yes, of course, lights can be operated in all weather conditions. When you say, mm, I understand that you are asking if lights can work in cold climate and warm climate in uh, humid and salty uh, environment. If this is the question, then the answer is, of course, yes. The lights are ingress protected IP67, so they can be submerged under the water and, and uh, keep working. How your product can control operate remotely? Uh, well, it's, uh, the answer is like that. Every light is controlled by a wireless network. Uh, so each light is equipped with a radio module that receives signal from the controller, controller, sorry. And this is how we send the signal to the light. Uh, this is how we can uh, switch it on or switch it off or change intensity. The same way we are monitoring those lights, also using, uh, also using uh, wireless radio network. Is there a provision in the system to clear the solar panels to get the maximum results? Yes, um, normally our customers, they are cleaning, they are uh, cleaning solars, solar panels every month, even in the, in the deserts. Uh, the thing is that solar we are using, they are installed, they are tilted. Uh, this way, when the sand or dust is accumulated on the solar panel, the solar, it is, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not accumulating there so easily because the solar is installed to a certain angle. The 200K ballpark estimation you mentioned, does this one include party one for each threshold? No, and uh, this, in, this includes only one, one, one full party, so full, full uh, party lights. Automatic system to clear panels. Uh, no, there is no automatic system to clear panels because this system would require uh, energy and uh, it makes system more, uh, uh, more expensive. This way it's much easier and much cheaper and um, to, to, to just to use manual labor to do that. It's not actually very problematic as we know from our customers. Uh, dear all, I suggest to go further and uh, I will ask, I will make more more, more, more place and uh, other time to, to answer your question at the later stage of the presentation, if you don't mind. So now I'm, I'm closing the, the chat window, so I will, I will go ahead and continue the presentation. Thank you very much for all these questions. And again, if any, anybody of you would have other questions uh, later, no problem, you can uh, email us and we will be happy to answer those. So why is the why we say that S4G lighting is the world safest? To explain that, uh, we need to refer to the design of typical conventional hardwired uh, lighting system. Lights require, um, and we need to speak about. Well, how safe is the traditional wire? Because many, system, many, many engineers uh, that we uh, meet with in the airport companies, in the airports, they intuitively think that solar is less reliable than wire lighting that they know, which is, um, which is not really the case because solar is simply less known than um, wire. This is why uh, it creates certain confusion. So in order to explain why solar is uh, safer than traditional, we need to look, have a closer look at the, at the design of traditional lighting. This is a simple, and uh, when I say simple, I really mean, I mean simplified, scheme of the traditional system. Please don't blame us for simplifying it too much, but it was the only way to, to show it and to make it transparent and clear. 
for you. And again, let's not forget that we are talking about regional domestic airports where you have no eight circuits and four substations. Normally you would have one substation or two substations. You have mains power supply and you have power generator as a backup power source. You have control system installed in the tower. You have a circuit. You have transformers, you have lights. As simple as that. And you all know this system very, very well. Whoever is in this business and installing those systems, this is done the same way over and over again for the last 100 years. Nothing changed here. Let's now take a look. Uh, each of these elements, and this is, uh, this is the, actually, I think the major, uh, the major problem of the wire lighting is that failure of single element that you see on this on this screen can lead or potentially can lead to the failure of the entire runway lighting or part of runway lighting you know that mains power supply can uh, stop feeding airport generator can fail if it's not maintained well and very uh, very often this is the case. Uh, this is the case uh, for airports that we see in Africa or in uh, Asia, where those uh, airports are un underinvested. Well, control system. The fire of control system is not a frequent case, but uh, the, the fault of the control system in the tower can happen. Circuits break. You can uh, dig and cut them, there can be short circuit. Also, you can lose CCR. And even though each of these parts is doubled or tripled in, uh, in the big airports, it does not give you 100% guarantee that system, so that, that airport will not, will, uh, will not lose runway lights due to the failure of, uh, of these elements. Uh, the the thing is that uh, S4GA engineers uh, manage to to reduce this risk of complete light outage to zero. How, 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 how did they do that? Uh, well, the reason is, 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 is like that. Let me just show you. So again, we have to get back to the design of traditional light, uh, lighting system. As I said, we have mines power supply, substation with CCRs, power generator, control system. Failure of each of these elements will lead to the emergency. If you lose your substation, if you, have, if you have only one, no more lighting. If you lose mains power supply and your generator is not in a good shape, no more lighting. If you have a circuit failure, well, you have second circuit. You lose part of the lights. This is an emergency for the airport. In all these, in all these situations, if they happen, airport will have to limit or stop flight operations, which means loss of money and loss, um, loss of uh, reputation of this airport. If you take a look now on the left, you have a typical drawing of the solar runway lighting. If you compare it to the wire lighting, which has all these backups, and all these interconnected elements. There is nothing interconnected in the solar lights. This is why this system has, uh, there is no risk of failure due to the 
loss of mains power supply because solar lights does not rely on mains power supply. It has no CCRs, it has no circuits, it requires no power generator. And this is why in all these cases of where wired lighting would stop operating or can lose part of lights, all these situations has absolutely zero impact on the solar light. It might seem very, uh, you know, simple as a simple conclusion, but this is the fact. This is this is how it is designed. On top of uh, on top of the fact that solar lighting by design is safer, and when I say safer, it has uh, there is the, the zero of losing all the lights due to failure of one single element is close to the, the, so the, the risk of, of, of losing all the lights is close to zero due to uh, failure of single part of the or, or the component of the system as you have in wild lighting on top of that in s4ga system we have five levels protection against system failure when we say system failure we have only one goal is to pre pro protect runway lighting or the protect airport from losing runway lighting due to the loss of power supply. So we want runway lighting, so S4GA runway lighting to operate in the worst case scenario. How do we do that? We do it by uh, having this five level protection integrated in the system. Let me explain you what it means. Okay, level number, level number one, we say, we call it, we have a distributed power source because each light in the system is powered independently, individually. The risk of losing all the lights due to loss, sudden loss of power, is close to zero. Just to remind you, in the traditional lighting, you have only two power sources. One is main, so coming from the city. Second one is power generator. There are only two. When you look at the solar uh, runway lighting system, you have as many power sources as you have lights. So imagine it's like you would have, you know, 100 main cable going from the city to the airport. So this is why we say distributed power source. So in order to lose all the lights in the system, every power source would have to fail you. So the risk of losing 100 lights in the solar lighting is close to zero and it's significantly less than the risk of the same failure in the wired lighting. Level number two, on top of the fact that each light is powered individually, it is also powered by two batteries. The battery, each battery can power the light independently which means that if one battery is out, fails, the second one will continue to operate. This is again, another level of backup uh, of S4GA solar runway lighting. Level number three, we say we have power independent from the control. In order to explain it, let me get back to the wild lighting system. You all know that wild lighting is controlled and powered using cable. So you send electricity via cable, lights are working. You stop sending electricity, no more lights, right? So in case if you lose um, power distribution 
cable, you are losing both control over the lights and you are using lights, so lighting. There is loss of power and control at the same time, right? Unlike in wire lighting, in S4GA system, the power is independent from the control. What does it mean? You see, we are controlling lights using radio network. So all these small dots are showing connection from light to light that is performed via radio network. So the same for the same is happening from the control system to the lights. All right. So why we say the power independent from control? Well, if we lose control, which is performed via radio network, so if we use radio for some reason, we still have power that is stored in the batteries that are inside of the lights. And we can use this power to run the lights because each light, each light has a on-off button and each light can be individually activated and they can still perform uh, their functions. So airport can still operate by night. This is not a convenient solution. Uh, it is not long term, but as an emergency solution, it will work. So imagine you have a failure of control system in the wire lighting. There is no more backup. There is no, there is nothing to do. You have to stop light operations. In our case, you have a failure of control. Nobody knows what's happened, what is happening. But again, you can send technicians to the lights and you can activate lights individually. So airport can survive this night or couple nights until problem is solved. So there is loss of control has zero impact on the airport flight operations. Lever number four. S4G system is equipped with individual light monitoring. When I say individual light monitoring, what, what do I have in mind? We supply to airports complete LCMS. So it's a software that is installed in the tower where you have each light depicted on the special, uh, on the layout of the airport. And when one of the light is not working or the battery is low, the system will inform a traffic controller or technician that this specific light is not working. What it means, it means that you can send, if you are at the airport, you can send technician to the specific light that is well-defined. You know where it is installed exactly. You can send your guy there. He can put, instead of this faulty light, he can install spare light, take the faulty light to the hangar, and then Without any stress, this light can be this light can be repaired. So again, individual light monitoring works in a way that it will inform airport about system malfunction, and it will tell you exactly where the problem is. Level number five. We have control system designed in a way that there are multiple backups built in. What do, I, what do I have in mind? Control system in S4GA consists normally of two elements. One is LCMS, the software. Another one is a control unit. Both these elements are installed in the tower. Well, let's imagine for a moment that software stop operating. It's, it's not something that cannot happen. It's a software. It can be frozen. There can be some bug. Well, normally in the airports are, that are using software from the traditional lighting systems, fix uh, 
let's say the problem can be solved and it sometimes requires weeks or months before your uh, supplier will come to you and, and fix it. Until then, well, you have a problem in, with the control of, of, of your system. In our case, if LCMS is not operating well, that's not a problem because you have a backup control panel that always is installed in the tower. You have uh, knobs, physical, traditional knobs that you can use to uh, activate groups of lights, change their intensity. Both these elements are installed in the tower. Now the next emergency that can happen is the fire in the tower or lack of uh, power supply in the tower. It's not a problem for the system because if you lose this primary control system, you uh, still have another option. You have handheld controller that can be used and can be stored not in a tower, but in a, in a different place as a backup control system. It can be used to control the system to activate it, deactivate it remotely. But again, we are uh, assuming always worst case scenario. So let's say we use all this seat control system for some reason, handheld controller is not working. Each light is equipped with emergency on off button. So you can send a technician to every light and every light can be activated manually. This is not a convenient, as I said, but you have this option. So you have an airport on Bora Bora or on Maldives, which is far away from every maintenance center, uh, any shipping or even visiting there to, to uh, fix the problem will take time and airport cannot wait. And we allow them to keep operating while waiting for somebody to help them. And they have an option. They don't have to close flight operations. They kept, can keep running, even though uh, worst case scenario already happened. OK, uh, before I go to the next uh, part, I see there are some questions. I would like to answer those. Sorry, it was a little bit longer uh, part, but I wanted to explain in details. Okay. Okay. What is the, there are, there are a few questions here. Uh, what is the approximate distance from the controller to the light fixture? Time taken to install the complete system on one runway is the dual battery pack a new feature. I wasn't aware of it. Okay, any license for the system, any periodic fee on annual basis for upgrade, upgradation of renewal of software. What will be the effect of high power electromagnetic microwave on the system installed? What will be the effect someone uses Arab jammers? Okay. Okay. So what is the approximate distance from the controller to the light fixture to, the, to control them? Okay, that's a good question. Let me show you on the, how it works. Um, in order to explain, to answer the question, you have to understand how the radio network in S4G system works. We are using so-called mesh network. Mesh network means that the signal has to reach to the closest site from the control tower, from the control unit, and then the signal is distributed automatically to the other lights from light to light. So each light is a receiver and transmitter, which means that control unit does not really have to uh, have a high range, so it does not have to communicate with every light on the, on the airport. It only has to reach the closest one, and because on the airport we have very defined um, distances between the lights, so we don't have, we cannot have more than 100 meters between the lights, uh, the signal will be retransmitted further. So even if you have control unit here and the furthest light is 10 kilometers from the control unit, and between control unit and the last light you have 1,000 lights, it's not a problem because signal will be retransmitted. But to answer the question, the range 
of the control unit is uh, three kilometers. So control unit might be looking at uh, only let's say 30 40 percent of the lights but it's okay because then the signal will be retransmitted using other lights to the to the rest okay time taken to install the complete system on runway good question thank you very much rajiv um well here there are two answers sometimes when we have emergency and when we have uh, when we are delivering systems um for airports that require them to be installed very quickly we can do it even within 12 hours our recent project in thessaloniki uh, where we installed lights on two and a half kilometer runway we have the lights were delivered to the airport uh, the spots where the lights should be installed have been designated and marked and it took our team team of 12 people to install uh, I think 120 or 140 lights within 12 hours. If we have more time, well, then we don't have to do it so quickly. Normal time of uh, installation is maximum three days, three, four days. Is the dual pack battery a new feature? Yes, the dual pack uh, is the new feature. We have recently changed the body of the light in order to accommodate for two lights, uh, sorry, two batteries. There are two reasons for that. And reason number one, we wanted to have more autonomy, so more operating time. Reason number two, we wanted to have backup uh, in case if one battery would uh, fail. We do not sell a software based on license. Uh, on license, we sell software uh, well as, a, as an equipment. So you, we, we, you pay us for the software and then it's yours in case if there are any updates that are critical for the software, we provide them to you for free. What will they be uh, the effect of high power electromagnetic microwave on the system installed? To be honest, it's for me, it's hard to say. Uh, hard to say. Uh, I'm not a specialist in radio waves. What I can say is that uh, this system is installed uh, in the airports, in international airports that are operating different kind of radio equipment, such as instrumental landing system, BOR, DME, uh, radio communication radars, all these are using different radio frequency and there has been no interference with our uh, radio system. What will the, be the effect someone uses RF jammers? Well, you would have to have significant RF jammer to interfere with our uh, radio system. So the effect will be, it is I tell you like this, it is always possible to jam radio frequency. The question, of course, will be why somebody would need to do that uh, on the airport. You can say, well, it can be a terroristic attack. But I can say, okay, but you see on the, it's the same question I can ask about wired lighting, saying what will happen if somebody will find a cable, electrical cable, cable running to the airport and will dig it and will break it. Well, can it, is it possible? It is possible. Can you um, make any kind of a solution um, not to allow for that? You cannot, because there can be always a person who can try to, to kill the, the system. Can we set brightness of each light manually when we use emergency on a button? No, emergency on a button sets the light to the highest intensity because this is emergency on a button. What are the operation modes lights? How often you recommend to replace the battery power source on the light picture? Operating mode, uh, well, I don't know what you mean exactly by what are the operating mode. Um, lights can operate in a few different intensities and also those lights can operate in uh, infrared mode, so uh, NVG compatible. Also light, we can set it up to operate from dusk to dawn, so from sunset to sunrise automatically. How often do you recommend to replace the battery power source? Every three years. This is the time we recommend to e e replace the battery. How many brightness steps available in these lights? Via software, 
So using our software, you have five steps of intensity. If you use handheld controller, you have uh, three steps in intensity. Okay. I think those are all questions uh, for the moment. Um, thanks, thanks for asking. I will now get to the to the uh, last part of the uh, presentation, which will uh, be about solar uh, power supply. Recommended. Okay, I will I will get back to the to the questions when I finish this this part. Thank you very much. So the question now that is always uh, or usually asked is how can or can the solar lighting operate 365 days on solar? You see, normal normal uh, thinking is well, sometimes you have few cloudy days or no sun, so the assumption is that light solar powered light shall stop operating, right? No, it's not. It's not exactly correct thinking. Let me explain why. I know that probably, probably from for some of you, this explanation will be a little bit, let's say, childish and too simple. But this is the only way I can do it, um, the fast way. So forgive me for this simplicity. We have to two things in a solar light. We have element that uses the energy and element that generates the energy. LED is using energy and solar panel is generating energy, right? For us, the, the, the question is, can we generate more energy than we are using? If we can, well, the light will operate continuously. If we cannot, the light will stop operating. We say it's the balance of energy. It shall be positive. Okay. Next, next uh, assumption or next important fact. Regional airports and domestic airports that we are working with, they are operating night time. Uh, I mean, they require lights during night time operations because they do not use those lights during day. The second issue is that amount of flight operations on those airports is significantly less comparing to the international airports. When I say significantly less, we assume 10 flights per day. We can even assume 10 flights after sunset. Um, if you take a look at the schedule of, I don't know, any airport, uh, which is regional in Africa or Asia, you will not find airports that are operating, you know, every hour. I mean, that are that are servicing five, ten uh, airplanes every hour. So mainly, what I'm saying is that the amount of operations on regional airports is smaller than in international. So now, how do we calculate power 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 consumption? We assume that airport operates. 10 flights after sunset. We assume that each flight operation, so landing of the airplane and departure of the airplane, require half an hour, 30 minutes of lighting, which means that if you have to process 10, 10 flights, you need five hours of, 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 the, of the lighting. This lighting system, solar lighting, is not designed to operate 24 seven. It is designed to operate when needed. This is why we always refer to the amount of operations. We are explaining airports that they, when they use these lights when needed, uh, they have to save energy. Now, based on the, on the amount of uh, hours we need to operate every night, we assume that we need to do that every day, so 30 days per, per month. And this is how we get to the monthly power consumption. So in this case, we know exactly how much electricity our light is uh, consuming. 
And by when we multiply five by 30, which is 150 hours per, per month, we multiply it by the amount of watts used by the LED per hour, we can calculate very easily power consumption. So here you have, here you have graph, monthly graph of power consumption of the system, which depends on the amount of operations. But more or less, it is around, as you can see here, it is around 500 watt per month. And this is, this is a consumption of one light. One light consumes 500 watt per month if operate, if it is on for five hours every day. This is the assumption for this graph. Okay. Now, when we know, and we, we can very easily predict consumption, and we can easily calculate consumption because we know exactly that when we turn on the LED, this is how much energy it will drain. Now, the next question is about power generation. So we want to make sure that if we use, five, if we need 500 watt of energy every month, we will produce that much energy using our solar panel. So what we do, we are using special simulation tool that will tell us uh, based on the amount or let's say the size of the panel, the location of the airport, it will tell us how much energy can we generate per month from, from the size of the solar panel that is tilted, uh, like on this picture here. I wanted to show you how it uh, looks in reality. So let me, let me maybe show you, uh, just hold on. I will, I will switch, uh, we'll switch the screens to the, to another application. And I will try to show you what it means and how, how we do that. Just hold on. Okay. Now, I don't know if everyone is watching that, and if you all see that, I started so instead of my presentation, now I'm showing you uh, the tool that is called Photovoltaic Geographical Information System that is developed by European Commission. This is a database of solar radiation collected from the satellites for the last few de decades. And we're using this database, this simulation tool to simulate uh, amount of energy generated by our system. So just to uh, just to show you how we do that, let's assume we are well simulating for I don't know, let's say airport in Algeria. I don't know which one, but let's say Algeria in, in general. So this is Algeria here, right? Uh, we have here coordinates that we have selected. Now we have certain inputs to be filled out. We have installed peak power in kilowatt. So I will put here 002, which means 20 watt. 20 watt is exact power output of the solar panel we have for each of our light. So this is not a total our output of the entire system, it's a, looking at individual light. Okay. Then I will click visualize results. And here we have amount of energy generated by this 20 watt solar panel in Algeria from month to month. And you can see that in the worst case scenario, See this, it's, it is in, in kilowatt, so it's 2000 watt. Here we have, in the worst case scenario, we have 2000 watt of energy we are generating from the system. And but basically months, 
months are not different from each other. Now, do you remember how much energy we are using with our solar lights? So the solar light every month? Let me remind you, we require about five to 600 watt of energy. So zero six kilowatt every month. And this is how we, we are making sure that what we are generating is much above of what we are, um, what we require to run lights. This is how we, we know that solar light can work continuously 365 days because we see here that we generate, well, sometimes four to five times more energy than we require. We call this safety margin. To give you a different example, because you can say, ah, well, this is Africa, you have a lot of sun there. Let's talk about, well, France, for example, okay? We have France, let's say Paris. Okay, we have Paris and let's do a simulation for Paris. See, in Paris is different because it's during uh, European spring and summer and a little bit of autumn, your power generation is pretty high, but you have certain months where you have like January or December where still, and the power generation is, is not that bad. You have almost 600 watt when you need only 500. So even in France, this system will continue to operate. And this is not a matter of, um, you have to remember that this system does not operate 24 seven. It operates when needed. And it op its hours of operations depend heavily on amount of landings in the airport. So this is what I wanted to say. Now, uh, I assume you have uh, questions in this regards. So let me let me check. What are those? Uh, Recommended spare for one system. Can we get the light operated on solar and electricity? Well, the recommended spare, we, we recommend to have 5% five, 5 of the uh, lights in terms of spare parts. So let's say you have 10 lights. No, you have, uh, so you have, uh, sorry, uh, you have 100 lights. You, you would, I, would, I would recommend you to have five solar panels, five uh, PCB, five antennas. I would also recommend you to have maybe one or two spare lights complete so in case of failure of one light you can exchange them and you don't have to uh, fix them on the on the runway can we get the light operated on solar and electricity yes you can get the light operated on solar and electricity question one autonomous time when charged 100 percent for a high intensity light and low g tax intensity 300 percent okay on the lowest intensity, taxiway edge light will operate up to 600 hours. Runway edge light will operate 180 hours. On the highest intensity, runway edge light will operate 60 hours and taxiway edge light will operate, uh, well, 150 or 180 hours. Can we use battery charge or external power source in case no sun? Yes, you can. Each light has a, a power connector, so you can demount it, you can connect it to the external charger. But you have to remember that this situation when you have no sun um, is not, is not risk for you, it's not dangerous because if you have 200, if you have 200, uh, well, let me just show you the, uh, this example. I think it's important to understand. Now I, I have changed my, my screen to the whiteboard because I wanted to, to show you something. 
it is, this I think is important. I am I am drawing two aces. Here, let's say we have aces with uh, axis. Sorry, the axis with um, operating hours. So we have two two hundred hours stored in the in the light. Right, or 200, let's say 100, 100, 180 hours, right? This is the maximum. And let's say here we have, um, sorry, here we have days. So we have day one, day two, day three, day five, six, seven, and so forth, right? So imagine that you are using only uh, five hours out of 180 every day. So even if you have and you are doing it by night. So your graph will look something like this. Uh, not, very, not very well. So this is one day. Okay, this is second day. This is day, day, day number three, day number four. So you're, the thing is, you are, I know you are concerned with uh, no sun. The thing is that because you have 180 hours of operation, and it, Every day you are using only five hours. Discharge of the battery is happening very slow. And remember that whenever you have sun and even during cloudy weather, the, the, the light will be recharged again. With you, during, the cloud, uh, during the direct sun, four, five hours, and your light is back to the full, of, full autonomy. During cloudy weather, it will be recharged a little bit, but it will be. So, the risk of losing lights due to low energy is very, very low, assuming you're operating, you know, even 10 hours per day. Okay, let me show, take a look at the, at the chat. Cost compared with an approximate factor two, three, four. The cost compared, uh, I'm, I'm having this question from uh, SW, cost compared with an approximate factor of two, three, four. I do not understand, so you have to explain, uh, clarify what you mean by that. Uh, Alfonso, very interesting and clarifying your explanation on power consumption generation. I'm glad. I think this is the most, uh, the most confusing part that, that require explanation. And uh, normally when I do this kind of graph, then people say, ah, okay, now we, we saw differently. But, of course, as we say, the lighting is the world's safest. Uh, as I said before, even if you have no sun for 60 days, which is impossible, you can demount your light, you can take it to the hangar, connect it to the charger. Eight hours, it's full again. Again, you have 180 hours. Can batteries get damaged by excessive discharge. No, the battery has a protection against excessive discharge and, and also, also overcharge. So the, the light will shut down uh, the, the battery in case if it is, uh, I think, will reach something like 12 or 15%. Do you have pilot controlled activation mode for lights and in remote or uncontrolled airports? Yes, we do. Uh, well, we can supply lights with a module that allows pilot to send the signal to the lights on the pilot frequency from 118 to 136 megahertz. And the frequency is set by us internally for the airport. And so airport is defining the frequency we set in it. Well, that's how it works. Okay, let me get back to the, to the presentation. Mm -hmm. So getting back to the, to the power, power uh, supply, to sum up, whenever we have power generation that is more than power consumption, the system will continue to operate. So this graph, is a conclusion of what I was talking about. In the countries that are highlighted here in yellow, the power generation will always, in every 
location will, will always be more than power consumption. And power consumption, we have to understand, uh, it is linked directly to the amount of operations. And because this system, I told you from the beginning, it is used mainly by regional airports with limited amount of operations. It's not 24 seven, it's not like 12 landings per hour. It's rather two, three landings per day, sometimes 10 landings per day. We can safely say that this system will, and this kind of airports will keep operating 365 days without any problem and the safety margin is huge. On top of that, we have battery that has significantly uh, more operating hour uh, than required by the airport daily. As I said, you have 180 hours in the full battery. By day, you're gonna use five hours. So if you divide 180 by five, you see how many days you can run without Z, without any sun, which is impossible because you still have some. Even in a bad weeks when you have cloudy weather, you have you know a couple of days with at least two, three hours of sun. So this is why this is why uh, S4G solar lighting can operate 365 days on solar. Yeah, I was supposed to make uh, simulations, but I already did it for you, for two airports. Okay. Uh, well, we can still have uh, some time for uh, questions, no problem. Uh, what I wanted to say is I wanted to thank you all for uh, listening to me, if you have any requests, if you would like to uh, esti get an estimate for the project for some airport you are working with, don't hesitate to contact us. So please shoot your questions. Let me just check the chat window. Okay, share some, share some data of your lights and ICAO requirements like Candela. Well, our lights provide the highest um, light output in the, in, the, in, the, in the industry in terms of low intensity lights. Uh, runway edge light provides up to 1,200 candela of the light. If we're talking about ICAO compliance, I can confirm that all lights are um, ICAO compliant and each light has been tested by Intertech laboratory, and we have a certificate of, of, of conformity. So if you would like to, to see those, please contact us and we will share these documents with you. And of course, um, I will, okay. Why S4G only develop airfield for non-precision approach runway? Well, because, because uh, we decided strategically to focus on this segment, uh, which is uh, because we uh, we started from the from the lighting system that is low intensity. We are currently developing high intensity system that is required for uh, precision airports. But precision airports, uh, I think today they are not ready for this kind of uh, solution. Even those solutions are. Uh, are pretty well tested and proven. International airport operating CAT 2 or CAT 3, they would require also inset lights uh, that we do not do. So we thought for us it's better to focus on the segment of regional airports and to, to be number one there than to have offer for every type of airports which is in the world. Do we have regional offices? Uh, no, but we have uh, regional uh, distributors. In runway edge light, why do we have central omnidirectional light in addition to white white uh, or white yellow bidirectional lights? Okay, uh, the reason is very simple. Omnidirectional light is providing 
light that is required by ICAO. ICAO says that uh, low medium intensity light shall be visible from every direction and the intensity provided by the light should be minimum 50 candela in every angle, uh, every horizontal angle from zero to 50 degrees. We as S4GA providing permanent lights think this is not enough light output for the, for the permanent system. This is why we added directional optics that are providing up to 1,200 candela in the directions of approach. So to sum up, omnidirectional element optics is for the compliance and bidirectional is for practical reasons to have a good optical range for the pilots. What kind of protections are there against lighting? If a uh, control system, uh, control system that we are having uh, is having a lighting arrester that protects control system because it has a connection to the antenna and antenna is installed on the top of the or the rooftop of the tower. So the control system is, is protected with the lighting arrester. Give some details on solar puppy. Uh, well, I think that uh, this is a this is a separate topic. I would uh, I would suggest to uh, to have a just a private conversation later if you are interested. We are providing basically to sum up, our puppies are powered by solar engines, so you do not need to have any CCR um, or to build. Uh, power distribution network to power your puppy. When you order from us complete system, we deliver solar lights and solar power puppy. All right, so those are the questions. Uh, do you have any questions on the topic of the safety or the power supply? I would say like this, if any uh, one of you would uh, require uh, more details on the uh, on the on our system. I suggest to have a separate conversation. Uh, we can always uh, schedule a Skype call so I can uh, answer all of your questions. To at the at the end, again, I would like to say uh, thank you very much for being so patient. Uh, for me, it is hard to speak with you because I I do not hear you. I can. Let's say I can only assume that you understand what I'm saying. But if anything would need more clarification, I'm happy to, to help you. Uh, at the end of the webinar, I would really like to invite you to visit our stand at Inter Airport in Munich. That will happen next month. It's, uh, I think it's the best, best show in the airport industry where you can find a lot uh, I will be there personally with all the equipment. You can have a demo presentation. You can see how it works. Ask all the hard questions. We can discuss your projects. So I think it will be the great place to uh, meet and to uh, build our relationships. So again, thank you very much. Uh, well, I, I hope to see you soon in Inter Airport and uh, Please, you're welcome to ask more questions via email. Thank you very much, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you, all the participants.